Today we're going to talk about fibers. Fibers are considered class evidence um, and can be used as circumstantial evidence to link victim suspects um, and the crime scene kind of to each other. So here's a little fiber vocabulary to kind of get us started. Um, the smallest parts of a fiber are called filaments, right here. Um, filaments are single strands of the material that are twisted with other filaments to make a thread or fiber. So like these individual pieces right here are actually woven together with filaments, single individual strands that are kind of um, twisted together to make the actual fiber. So you take filaments, you twist them together to make fibers. Fibers are made up of many filaments twisted or bonded together. And when you think of a fiber, this is what you're thinking of, that single individual piece. If you're to take that single individual piece and put it under the microscope, it would have filaments making it up. There's two types of fibers, natural and synthetic, and we'll talk about those in just a minute. And then you can take several pieces of fiber and you can weave them together to make fabric. <coughs> so filaments are twisted together to make fibers. Fibers are twisted together to make And we'll talk about the different weave patterns that you can use to make fabrics. And then fabrics can be woven together in distinct patterns to make up what we call textiles. And textiles are like big objects. Think cloth, carpeting, rope, things like that. So filaments are the smallest pieces that get twisted together to make fibers. Fibers get woven together to make different types of fabric. Think polyester, nylon, cotton, things like that. And then fabrics can be woven together to make textiles. So when we talk about making fabrics and we make um, textiles, we use weave patterns. Okay, um, The way we weave different um, fibers together will give us different patterns. So um, there's two parts to a weave. There's the first part, which we call the warp, right here. The warp is the lengthwise yarn or thread in a weave. It's usually the stronger, smoother, and more even one. And then the second part of a weave is what we call the weft or the woof. A lot of times in our class, we refer to it as the weft. It's the crosswise yarn or thread in the weave. So when you're putting things together, this one's running lengthwise and the, uh, the weft is running crosswise usually. The warp and the weft don't have to be the same material. If they're not, say the warp is uh, cotton and the weft is polyester, it's called a blend. So let's take a look at the different patterns we can use to weave things together. The first pattern, it's the simplest, most common pattern, it's called plain. So a plain weave pattern is where the warp and the weft yarns pass under each other, just alternating with, with one another. So one over, one under, one over, one under. So if we were going to show you this, okay, and here's our, say so here's our warp. Okay, this one would be going over once, under, and then over. And then this way might go the other direction, under, over, under, and then back and forth. So one over, one under, one over, one under. Okay, and it would just keep going like that. The second type you can have is what we call twill. Twill is where the warp is passed over the weft yarns um, before going under. So the warp is passed over either one time or two times or three times before going under um, it makes kind of a diagonal pattern. Denim is an example of a twill pattern. So let's see if we can show you how this looks. So if these are wefts here, okay, and then this one is our warp, it would go two over and then one under and then two over and then one under and then two and then two over, one under, two over, one under, two over. And so it kind of gives like a diagonal feel to the fabric versus one over, one under. So it looks something like this. And then you have satin, which is the next type that you can have. 
and satin is where um, the warp will go like four or more over the weft ones and then under and it creates floats kind of big long stretches and then it goes one under and then big long stretches so let's see if we can show you what this looks like so when we're talking it would go over way over so we go like four over then just one time under and then four over and then one time under four over one under four over so it creates these oops sorry these big huge long stretches called floats and then it goes under once and then big huge long stretches so these right here would be the floats so you've got plain which is just one over one under you've got twill which is two or three over and one under and then you've got satin which is four or more over and one under the last one is really unique so it's easy to recognize it's called knit um, and it's made by interlocking loops in a specific arrangement okay so you can see they kind of like go um, through each other and the loops kind of interlock with one another so it's kind of a unique one in itself it's pretty easy to recognize when you see it so those are the four weave patterns that are out there for you to look at and recognize. So when we're talking about fibers before, we said filaments make up fibers and we said the fibers, there's two types, there's natural and synthetic fibers. Natural fibers are animal, vegetable, or inorganic fibers. So anything coming from like a natural source, not made in a lab. Um, so some examples are silk, cotton, wool, mohair, mohair, cashmere, all examples. So think silk comes from like the silkworm, cotton is grown, wool comes from an animal, right? So anything that's coming from like a specific source that's a natural source would be considered a natural fiber. And then artificial or synthetic fibers, these are synthesized or created from alter, um, altered natural sources. So these are usually ones where we've either created them in a lab or we've altered one of the natural ones to get what we want. So all the synthetic fibers are usually ones that we've made because we need a specific property. Like think for example spandex, spandex stretches, right? So we needed some type of fiber that would stretch. So in the lab we created a fiber that would have elasticity as one of its properties. So some examples of the artificial or synthetic fibers are rayon, nylon, acetate, acrylic, spandex and polyester and that's not an exhaustive list for either one but those are just some common examples so the good thing about synthetic fibers is that they're made of polymers and polymers are long chains of repeating units um, the repeating units are called monomers so think about like a, a chain like a chain that you would wrap around your bike how it has like the little individual circles that are all linked together well the individual circles are the monomers and it makes the big long chain which is the polymer well because synthetic fibers are polymers as well they have small units that make them up um, they have unique properties because of the way that their monomers are linked together and the monomers themselves the good thing about this is that we can forensically analyze it um, we can take a look at how the polymers fall apart um, we can take a look at the unique characteristics of the monomers once we get them apart, etc., etc. We can also look at the cross sections. Because they're made in a lab, they're basically forced out of a nozzle when they're super hot and then they're woven together. And not all the nozzles are um, perfectly round, so some of them have different cross sectional shapes like this. This one's trilobal. Um, there's a like a dog bone shape, there's a four lobed one, an octolobed one. So they have all sorts of different, the tube that's pushing out that fiber um, will create a shape um, at the very tip or the end of the synthetic fiber that we can analyze as well and say, okay, well this specific fiber has this, now we can see if our crime scene has something similar. So when we're talking about the value of fibers, why they're useful in forensic science, they are considered class evidence, right? We cannot individualize a specific fiber back to a source because there's so many, like, think about like a single fiber of cotton. Well, how much cotton is out there? 
There's hundreds of thousands of different fibers. There's no way we could say it came from that particular shirt or something like that. However, if it's a green cotton fiber, we can start to take a look at it and we can consider it class evidence and it can have probative value in court, right? If we find a green cotton fiber and we find a black denim fiber and a white sock, like another cotton fiber, and the suspect that we pick up has all those exact same colors when we pick them up, that would have high probative value in court because the chances of them having all of those fibers in common would not be very good. Um, it's common trace evidence found at a crime scene. People lose fibers off of them all the time without even realizing it. And we can use both physical and chemical properties to take a look at fibers, which gives us a little bit more value in court. So this is kind of what I was just talking about. Because of the large variety of fibers, because there's so many fibers that are made all over the place, the chances of any two people wearing exactly the same items is so low, it has very, very high probative value in court. So when you collect fibers at a crime scene, you want to bag all clothing items individually in paper bags, okay? Make sure that the different items aren't placed on the same surface so you can't cross-transfer anything. You want to make tape lifts of any exposed skin areas or any um, intimate objects. So like if you found a fiber on the couch at the crime scene or anything like that, you would just do a tape lift from that object to pick up any of the fibers that were there. The removed fibers should be folded into a small sheet of paper and then put into a plastic bag. You don't want to just chuck it into a bag so that it gets lost in the mix. So taking a look here, just for a little bit of extra practice here, um, we have natural versus synthetic. So wool would be an example of a natural fiber. Cotton would be an example of a natural fiber. Fiberglass is an example of a natural fiber. Nylon is a synthetic fiber. Polyester is a synthetic fiber. Spandex is a synthetic fiber. Silk is a natural fiber. Acetate is a synthetic fiber. Asbestos, oh, asbestos is a natural fiber too. And acrylic. And rayon. Just for some additional kind of, to refresh our brains on that. <laughs>